Okay, so that'll be the first thing. I'll touch the C++ memory again because, well, it's important. Like, it's important that we start understanding how programs uh, map to memory and, and how memory and programs uh, work together to, you know, show us hello world or save data to variables and load functions and run programs and what have you. So then we'll get an introduction to uh, C++ data types, variables. Uh, we're not we're not going to cover all the C++ data types. C++ has a lot of data types. We're going to stick to the fundamental ones. Integer, which is a whole number. Double uh, from the Python days, that's a float, but it supports uh, better precision, right, in a very large number. So in essence, it's a decimal number, right? And we will cover bool, which is a true or false uh, variable. Uh, char, character, that's just one character. Right? And then we'll introduce the string and see uh, an example of why it is a special type of data type. Uh, we'll have examples with uh, those data types. And uh, let me see, uh, I'll introduce the keyword auto. So in Python, you don't have to tell Python what data type you are using. You can say, uh, var name equals John, and then Python knows that you want a string. And you can say number uh, or num equals five. Python knows that you want to work with numbers. That's not the case with C++. C++ is very picky. You have to tell it like what you want to work with. If you want to create a whole number, then you have to say uh, the data type in int, and then the name for the variable. And you can assign it or not assign it a value when you declare it, right? But at some time you have to assign it a value and we'll have some examples uh, that deal with all those different data types, integer, double, bool, and char, and string. Uh, and then toward the end, I will uh, show you how we will uh, write code on Visual Studio Code, and then we have to send it back to GitHub. So we will have a demonstration, right? So, because, I mean, you have to do that. Like when you do your homework, you do your homework on your computer or on the cloud, and then your program works. And then at, at some point, you have to send it back to GitHub so that I can grade it. Uh, and then from GitHub, I get an alert in Blackboard. I download your GitHub source code, and I make sure that it's running as intended. So. Uh, yeah, we do have a lot to cover today. So let me open Chrome. Thank God. Let's see. And let me bring this here. I'll go to GitHub. Uh, uh, and let me go to GitHub. And if you want to follow along, you can go to GitHub. Let me, I forgot my water. So I don't want to be with a cotton mouth, so let me get my water first. All right, so right now we just go to GitHub. Yeah, if we want to follow along, just hop on GitHub. GitHub. Okay. So, uh, so you go to your GitHub. You have to be logged in, right? And then uh, if you click on Code Spaces. And you scroll down, then you'll see you'll see a list of uh, online compilers. Right? In my case, I have two, and I honestly, I think uh, I don't remember which one is for this class. I think it's this one. So, uh, so then if you click on this link, it'll open. 
your code space. That's where Visual Studio Code uh, lives. You can also go to your GitHub homepage, right? So if you have your GitHub homepage saved, which I'm sure most of you do, uh, let me go to my profile. I don't have the link saved, so I have to go find it. So if I go here, and then I go to repositories, and then I go to mine, you can also go here, click on the green code button, uh, click on the code spaces tab, and then uh, click on the link, right? It gives it, uh, I guess, colorful names <laughs> so uh professor yeah mine says refactored memory it did have that other name when we did it and now it says refactored memory i don't know what that means yeah so oh, i guess it just gave it that name right so also oh, just gives it random names because mine says uh ubiquitous rotary phone so is it just random for everyone it's more than likely random for everyone right it's random for everyone. Mine is glowing space halibut. <laughs> like yours better. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I wouldn't worry about the name. So uh, this is my cloud compiler. I work with the GCC compiler, right? So once I do that, it does some initial configuration. Then I can go ahead and click on CMake here, and then I should see this uh, tree structure. And uh, I do not like uh, the white, right? So I think if I go here to settings, click on the gear icon, right? Right here, there's a gear icon. Uh, it's been covered, but uh, if I click on it, then I click on settings, I think uh, theme, right? So theme, I type theme, and I can switch to some other. Uh, I'm gonna go for uh, dark, Visual uh, Studio dark right so i think i like this one better and or you can choose whatever one you want right dark plus not sure what the difference is but the white just kind of like hits my face <laughs> yeah so you can if you want to configure your environment right, you can do that so let me uh, mute that student okay okay so that's one change okay so this is Visual Studio Code, okay? So let's talk about a C++ program. And we'll stick to a very basic one because it's very important that you understand how a C++ program works. Uh, so uh, let me see, I'm not sure if I can do, no, nope, I can't do that. So let me go here, settings, uh, font, I think. Let me make a little, the font a little larger, I don't know. I guess it keeps on changing it. The last time I, I changed it, and this is gonna play with me. Okay, so we have uh, this code here, and let me open this here. Uh, Anatomy of a C++ program. Okay, so to understand how a C++ program works, we have to understand uh, how C++ is uh, structured. So uh, we have uh, the C++ core language. That's out of the box, like C++ out of the box. Uh, here uh, you'll see keywords like uh, void, which means a, uh, that's a keyword that we use for a function that does not return a value. You'll have like the keywords for an if statement, a for loop, a while loop. Uh, let me see if I can make this guy a little better. Uh, maybe like that. And other keywords, right? Uh, one thing we don't have here is a utility that allows us to display characters to screen. So unless you write your own program uh, that knows how to interact with uh, Windows and the Windows driver for the monitor, which obviously not even I, I mean, know how to do that off the top of my head. So that would be a lot of work. So to do 
any kind of displaying, we have to use the C++ standard library. OK. And it uses a namespace. Uh, I'll, I'll explain what, an, what that is. And it's a uh, letters STD. I guess they stand for standard, right? I've heard uh, developers uh, pronounce it stud, right? I guess like C++ uh, stud library. Uh, but this here is namespace. So if you were wondering, uh, if you were ANSI and you were looking at the book, then the book says using namespace stud, right? Uh, semicolon and then magically like stuff uh, starts working. But uh, no, now knowing this information here, uh, to display something to screen in C++, we need input output, output stream. Remember in Python, you used imports. In C++, uh, we have something similar, but uh, we use includes. So this allows us to uh, display data to a monitor, OK? So uh, and, and that also will allow us to capture from keyboard. But uh, we have to use some uh, keywords uh, that we've not uh, talked about yet to so capture from keyboard. OK. So if we go back, knowing this information, if we go back and look at our program, uh, let me see, I think it's this one. We have include input uh, in, input output stream or IO stream, uh, less than, uh, greater than, or required. Pound sign is required, right? So, so this tells us uh, tells C plus plus to uh, bring in the code that uh, allows us to display to screen. Okay. So this is not sufficient enough. This gives us access to an object that will allow us to display something to screen and that object is capture uh, character output or see out character output but we see this here and remember i said that c++ works with namespaces so if i go back here all functionality in the standard library uses that namespace stud right so the book since it's for beginners but it's like I told you, once you learn something one way, then it's very hard to unlearn that. So the book's like, well, you can do this, and then you can do this, and then magically your program will still work. The problem is that this, if you program like this and you create a very large application in the future, you can run into problems because there's going to be some guy out there, right? that writes their own C++ library and maybe they they name it my ACC namespace so this is a namespace and uh, then they name something C out why anyone would do that well go figure but yes people do it right so then when you would try to run your program if that library is included in this in, in C++, then not, not C++, but in your program, then C++ would uh, complain that it doesn't know which C out to use. I don't know which C out to use. I don't know whether to use the my ACC C out or the stud C out. Even though we are telling uh, C++, hey, like use namespace stud, right? But it'll still like be like, well, yeah, wait a minute. But there's something else out there that, that's conflicting with me. So that's why I none of my examples use that because chances are uh, I'll shoot myself in the foot as my program grows. So uh, what we want to do is we want to say using the C out. So we, we are being explicit now, right? So I am telling C++, go look for the stud namespace and in that stud, stud namespace uh, 
somewhere in there you will find C out character output. So even if I introduce a library that has another C out, the fact that I'm explicitly telling C++ what to use, right? And then my code may grow to like, say it grows to 10,000 lines of code, right? And you're just using namespace. And then you introduce another library that has uh, objects that are named the same. Then, then you've just introduced a big headache, right? But if you start uh, using this format from the beginning, then you're, number one, uh, saving yourself from a headache in the future. But then, more importantly, you're following industry standards, right? Uh, in Java, C Sharp, and Python, like you always want to be explicit. And that's the same thing in C++. Although C++ uh, is a little bit more lenient. Actually, Java is too, right, with the imports. So that's the reason. I will not use uh, using namespace that. And you should not get into the habit because it's easy and I don't have to think, right? No, no, don't, don't think like that. Like, let's do it the right way from the beginning. And if in the future you go work at a C++ shop, then you won't be that person. Right? You won't be like, eh, hey, that's a person that's always like messing up our namespaces. So, questions on this topic here? Uh -huh. I have a question. Um, so I took Python last semester, and there was um, God. I'm so fried right now. I can't remember what it was called exactly, but the they had like protected names to prevent this kind of thing from happening. So C plus plus doesn't have that. You can it's like a free for all. You can name whatever you want in the libraries you create. Yeah, it's not just C plus plus. Java like uh, two programmers. I mean, there's like a lot of programmers around the world. They can name the object the same, right? And what hmm. differentiates the object? The namespace, right? In Java, they use packages. This is the same concept as a namespace, but uh, that's what will save us, like the namespace. So, so using this method here uh, will save us from a lot of uh, headaches, right? So if we go to run terminal then we should be able to uh, see the output, right? Hello world. And if I use using namespace, like it works. Like you could see, I mean, you, I mean, you could be like professor, but it works. Well, yeah, it works, you know. But uh, I promised you that I would not go by the book because I want you to differentiate yourself from other students in other classes, right? So we're going to do things the way the industry does it. And this uh, transfers to like other programming languages. Like once you're like, oh, C Sharp uses namespaces. So let me use explicit namespaces because I don't want to get into a big ambiguous issues later on, right? So, so this is the methodology we use. So how does this program work? Number one, we always need a function that is named main, always. So if I name it main, main, uh, I was going to put main one, but anything other than main, and we try to run the program, C++ will tell us that, that it can't find a main function, right? Undefined reference to main. That's like, I can't find the main function, right? So we need to have it named main, and we return an integer. And uh, more importantly, we have to do some initial configuration to display something to screen. We have to include IO stream. We have to, like, like you have to. For every program you write, uh, you need to do output. You have to include IO stream. And then we need to do some configuration. We tell C++ from, from your standard library, I want to use C out. And C++ knows how to find it because we've already already given it a hint, right? Like, uh, input, I, I'm including input IO stream. So in there uh, lives the character output object. And then here, notice I do not have to prefix it with the uh, C out. I was explicit on line four. This is what I want to use from your library. And then uh, character output, two less than operators. And then we have a literal, hello world, right? Uh, always required double quotes. In Python, it was double, single, like Python was very forgiving. C++, like, uh, you need to use double quotes. Otherwise, your program will not run. This is a statement, so we need 
semicolon. This is so, a statement, so we need semicolon. When you're doing the using standard C out, um, does that affect everything in the per the following function or everything in this page? Yes. Everything in on that page. So everything in this particular file is going mm -hmm. that follows is yeah, going to see people only like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> so of course we need the curly brace to open the code to close the code. Uh, this is a statement, semicolon. This does not qualify as a statement, no semicolon. You might be like, sir, but how am I gonna do my work? Like my homework, like I don't really know like where to put the semicolon. Like all the examples I write, uh, you can use those as templates for your assignments, right? And then after about two, three weeks, you'll, you'll know where to put the semicolons. One of the problems uh, with C++ is if you miss a semicolon, <laughs> It's not very friendly in, in telling you like what the issue is. Right? So uh, I think uh, we walked through the first assignment because I want students to to understand how to use C++ because it's not not like like Python, right? So any questions on the fundamentals of a C++ program? Uh, I have one. Um, I. I just tried to do uh, uh, the statement that you did on line four using SED uh, out, C out for C out, but my using is a blue text. It doesn't it doesn't reflect the same as yours. Am I doing something wrong? I think uh, you probably have a different theme, right? So, oh, the theming can affect it. Oh, it's just syntax color color for our eyes, right? So. Maybe you're on the on the white. Yeah, for me. Wait, where did you say for you it's a blue text? Because so I have using is blue, yeah. and then std and c out are both white. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. I mean, for me, if your program yeah, runs. For, yeah, because for example, for me, I'm using also a different theme, and it's using is red, and std is a uh, purple. So it's just probably a different theme. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've got a quick question. Does this, this auto saves as we type? Like I don't need to go in and tell it to save as I'm working in it. Yeah, it it, uh, it saves it for us. Excellent. Thanks. Okay, so sure. that was not too bad. Uh, let me go back here. Uh, so okay, so let me jump from this one to a different example, right? So this one was just to get you an introduction to a C++ program that's on one page, but on one file, you'll never encounter that like in, in professional uh, programming shops, you won't encounter that, right? But this is just to introduce you to uh, C++ basics. Let me jump to this one, right? So notice the difference here between hello world and it has an exe, but if I go to 01 data type, 01 int, then I have an exe and a library, okay? So the library is made up of int.h file, int.cpp file. Why is it like this? Because we are pushing toward reuse, right? So if we go here, and let me still come here. Uh, IO stream. Uh, IO stream uh, has CR, and CR can be reused all throughout your program. It's uh, a library. So if C can create libraries and another developer can create libraries, then we should be able to create libraries, right? So why do we create libraries for, for reuse, right? We don't want to be repetitive. Uh, so let me jump back to, so for example, uh, CR can be run from a test program and it can be run from a main program, right? So I'll show you what I mean. So um, 
C++ has different data types. A lot of them, like if you saw the, the readings in the book, it's just kind of like almost over. Well, actually, it is overwhelming, right? Because it's like, wait, wait a minute. When do I use what? And here we, I mean, you can find that information online. And if you go work, C Sharp, Java, Python, Sharp, whatever, you know, they, they'll like have programmer guidelines to, uh, to show you how or when to use what data types. That's why I just focus on the basic ones. Integer is a whole number, okay? So uh, let me go here and uh, let me, prototype means just a function signature. So it says create prototype for function echo variable. I think uh, echo uh, variable, that's uh, void means do not return a value. We have to we have to do that in C plus plus, okay? Uh, one int parameter, so integer, and then I'll say no, right? So this is a function uh, signature. Uh, some call it header prototype. And notice here we have a semicolon. And usually, like we would have some code that uh, gives this function some some uh, ability to perform a task. We don't, we don't do that in the header. Uh, it may seem that we're doing extra work, but as our program evolves, if, if we break down programs like this, then uh, our programs will compile a lot faster, right? Because C++ is smart, the compiler is smart enough to identify which files uh, changed and which didn't, and then it just run it compiles recompiles the ones that changed. But we have to help it, right? So the semicolon tells C++, hey, you know what? I am promising you that I will write the code for this function later on. All right, so let's go to that step. So we go here, and I want to do that, but I have to help the compiler. CPP does not know that int.h exists, right? So int.cpp has no idea that int.h exists, but we can help it. We can say include. If it's our includes, we use uh, double quotes. And then we say int header. So now we bring in that code in here, at least when it'll compile, right? And then we go ahead and complete our promise. And we simply say return, right? Like echo means like just uh, go ahead and uh, return this value. So echo variable, uh, void echo, integer num. And why is it complaining? I'm not sure. Uh, return. Uh, okay, so let me do a build here. Um, what does it say? Return statement void. Oh, actually, it shouldn't be void, right? If I'm returning something, so then uh, I'm contradicting myself. Int, but I am this signature has to match this signature. If we don't match them, then C will complain. So I updated the code, I can hit build. And as long as you see exit code zero, that means your code is it's okay. So question? No? Um, Mr. Gonzalez, so in this case where we set the echo barrel to integer, are we um, like casting a, 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 a what's called data type or is that what you would call that? No, we're not casting. Like casting means you're changing a data type from one to another. Here, like we accept an integer and then we return an integer. So we are using the same data type, right? So I'm gonna get a, a number five. I'm gonna return that number five as a whole number. So so it's not casting. Uh, I'm assuming you all took programming one. So you should have a good understanding of how functions work, right? So, so this function accepts one parameter number and it'll return it. Maybe what's confusing you is that we have to tell uh, the C++ function what data type we are going to return. We're returning integer. So at the beginning of line eight, that's what you're telling it. You're telling it what 
the data type is, and then you type out the function. Yeah. So this here uh, block that's highlighted means return an integer from this function. Okay. And obviously this is the function name. Okay. And then we need a parameter in Python. Uh, I think you would just give it a name, right? And then it's kind of like, ooh, you know, uh, C++, you need to be explicit. So I'm like, okay, uh, my num is of type integer. Okay. And then all I'm doing here is saying, hey, return num. And this is valid because int and int, right? So I accept an int and int. So then C++ is like, okay, you're following the rules, right? That, that I've stated for you. So you're telling, you're saying at the beginning there, echo variable is going to be an integer value. Mm -hmm. Then inside of the parentheses, you're saying I'm passing an integer and the name of that variable is num. Then the body of the function, you're saying return num, and you've already told it that it's an integer when you passed it to it inside of the parentheses. Mm -hmm. The only thing is here, this integer means echo variable will return a value that is of data type int, whole number. Got it. Okay, so that affects the return. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then within the parameter, you specify that it's an integer as well. You have to, right? Anytime okay. you use yeah. any variable in C++, you have to tell it what type of data type you want to work with, okay? So why am I introducing this, right? Like I know the book is like like all nice to you, right? It's kind of like, hey, you know, like uh, you can create a number and you can give it the value five. And guess what? If you include input IO stream, that means I want to display something to screen. I'm not going to follow the book convention. I'm going to say, I'm going to use stud C out. And then I can say C out value five, and that'll display five to screen, right? That's how the book teaches you. Like, that's a variable. You know, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But I opt to not do this. Instead, I will introduce the variable uh, with functions, right? So if you are running this program in Python, right? I'm pretty sure that 90% of you would go here and then you'd be like, okay, I need to use echo variable. Okay, so uh, in Python, if you were using a different file, you have to import that file, right? Same thing here in C++, we say include int header, only the header all the time, you only include the header. And now I can say uh, C out echo variable number five, that'll display five to screen, right? But I guess we're like, okay, so I'm running the program and by running it in main, uh, by running echo variable in main, then I'm testing my program. The problem with this, it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's manual and it's not reproducible, right? Obviously, echo variable is a very simple function. Like if we send it 10, it'll return a 10. If we send in 100, it'll return 100. If we send in 1,000, it'll return 1,000. Like, so no matter what value we insert here, like it'll always display the correct answer. And I purposely uh, chose a very simple function because I want to show you how we test that this function works, right? So. Uh, for now, we ignore this, right? We'll come back here. Remember, uh, here I told you if we have our own library, so if we have our own library, and we do, it's, uh, what's the name of this library? EX0101 library, okay? So we have a EX0101 library, okay? That's our library. We should be able to use this one from our main program, which uh, I showed you. I didn't run the program, but it'll work. And from a test program, and even from other programs, right? So notice how we are uh, working towards reuse. Let me show you that we can run it from a test utility. 
So I ask you to be patient with yourself, right? Like if this is kind of like, whoa, like this is not like Python. Well, it's not Python, right? And then the program methodology is like different, but this is a good program methodology because it'll make you a valuable candidate for jobs, right, in the future. So we have a SRC, examples homework, and then notice here we have test, examples homework. So maybe if I go here and I'm like, oh, data types. And I'm like, oh, data types. Oh, so maybe I can use uh, this library here. The configuration's been set up for you. So yes, we can use the library. All I have to do here is I always have to tell C++ where to find my code. And I always include the header file. So I say include int.h. Include int.h. So once I do this, C++ will find my echo variable function code. Okay, And if it can find it, then we can use it. So. I put this here because we can use this as a function to write our own code, right? So only caution, I tell you, if you do copy and paste like I did, this text here cannot be the exact same text as this one. If you do that, the test utility will not run your test cases. So test echo variable. Uh, oh. Validation. Validation. Okay. So, okay. How do how do we how do we test it? So let's go back to main. Okay. Uh, put your mind back to Python thinking. If you were going to use a function in Python, I'll give you Python syntax. You could do uh, this won't work obviously in C plus plus, but you could use uh, echo variable, and then you would run the Python interpreter and it would print something to screen and you'd be like oh my function works but no that's not what we need to do right what does it print it'll print five so we're like oh okay so the data in is five the data out is five so knowing that i already know how to test my code right that's why i chose a very simple function i'm like oh so if i Require true equals true, right? So use this as a guide to build your test assertion. And let me show you what a test assertion is. We're like, okay, so if I use require, uh, I can say true equals true. Notice a double for comparison, right? Double equal sign. But that doesn't really test anything. And we're like, okay, so I need to test echo variable. I know how to call it. I know if I say echo underscore variable with value five, it would print five to screen. And if it prints five to screen, then it's returning number five, right? So we're like, oh, so then if I run that function, then I should expect a number five, right? How do I know that? Because if we look at the code, all we're doing is returning the value, right? So num is five, this is five, return five, okay? So then we're like, okay, so if I call echo variable with five, then it should test this, right? So let's, let's give it a spin, right? So let me go to terminal, let me, uh, clear this and uh, we go to ex01 test right click run in terminal again please if this is overwhelming you like uh, we actually do the first uh, programming assignment in class uh, next week right so don't be like oh, okay drop this course yeah because i am uh getting a bit lost since my site does look a bit different from what i'm looking uh on your side yeah so, remember this video has been recorded right so yeah so i can always just go back and relook at it and make sure i'm following everything right yeah so okay so 
So we see all test paths it really doesn't tell us much, right? If I do up arrow, right? So first uh, I have to uh, click here and then up arrow, space dash s enter, uh, up arrow dash s enter, and let me see. Uh, Oh, okay. Uh, okay, there we go. So now notice that it's telling me this is the details for your uh, function assertion for your test assertion. You said I you said that you wanted to require that echo variable with an argument of five for the parameter should be equal to five. So if you run this statement, echo variable five, it gives you the value five. And knowing how the function works, we're able to set the test data, right? Five. So then it's like, yes, five is equal to five. And then we're like, oh, okay, well, what if I say that 10, if I, if I say echo variable 10, what should the value be here? It should be 10. 10, right? So I'm not trying to trick you, right? So so if we send in 10, it should return 10. So if you're the programmer, you know how a function works. You know if you send x data to it and then some processing is done, it'll return some y data back. So that's what we're doing here, like with the knowledge of the programming, very simple function, right? But we're like, oh, okay. So So this is how we can create test cases. Notice. I have test case one, test case two, and I'm not running this code in the main program. I'm running it in a test utility, and I can even have another test, right? So I grow my test bank. If I send in 100, it will return 100. So now I have three uh, test assertions. Very simple function, but my, my goal here is to teach you or to show you that Hey, you're the programmer. You know how the function should work. So you should know what to feed in and what it's going to give you back, right? So let me run this again. So run in terminal. And it's uh, compiling. And as long as you see green, you should be happy. If you see red, that means something's wrong with the code. So I saw green here, so let me uh, this up here. Actually, let me do a clear. And then let me do up arrow. And let me make sure, okay, that I do space dash s, enter, and that gives me details of what it ran for me, right? So notice now it's saying, hey, you ran echo variable with value five, and you expected it to be five, it is five. And then you ran it with 10, you expected it to be 10, and it was 10. You ran it with 100, you expected 100, and it was 100. We've tested our function. As our code grows, uh, we cannot test for other functions, and then we are creating a test bank. And that way we are not just saying, hey, I ran my code in main, and it worked no like we have a test bank we are creating a test bank and we are testing code so we wrote a piece of code and then we wrote another piece of code that validates the piece of code that we just wrote what if i say that 100 will return 10 purposely make it fail right so let's see what happens so run in terminal and it's going to build. And notice that right away it tells me, hey, you told me that echo variable with value 100 would be equal to 10, but it's not. Echo variable gives me the value 100 back, and it's not equal to 10, right? I purposely show you this because there are going to be times that there's uh, logic error in your code. So when you have errors in your code, start here. Always start here because you know your code. So make sure that you're feeding in 
the correct data and that you are putting in the correct expected result, right? So I'm going to purposely make it pass. And I'm going to say 1,000 should be equal to 1,000, right? And I will remove that. If you validate that this is correct, then the next logical point where your issue is is in the code, right? So then you go to the CPP file, and then you would inspect the code here to make sure that uh, you fix the error, right? Because the test case uh, drives your guides you to good programming and, and good code that works, right? And that's that's what we want to do. We don't we just don't want to be like ah, I wrote a lot of code, like write code, test code, write code, test code, write code, test code. At the end, you get a program that runs. Will it have bugs? Yes, it'll have bugs, but it'll have fewer bugs than if you don't have a good testing uh, mechanism, right? So, Okay, so let me show you that we were able to run uh, the library using test, and now we will be able to run that echo variable in main. So we go to main. We have to include int.h. Why? Because that's how C++ works, right? Like we include int.h. You might be like, hey, what about the CPP? Well, we have some code here in uh, CMake list, uh, where is my code here? Here, uh, here, like this is what stitches everything together. Okay, uh, you don't really need to know much about it, right? But always include dot h in whatever name dot h, right? So I included it. So C plus plus will now be able to find uh, help C plus plus find the echo variable function, okay? And then I've included IOStream, line five, I said I'm going to use stud character output object. So here I can just say cout, and then I can say echo variable with value 10, and I will add a new line, right, backslash n. And do I run the library? Notice the library, you can't run it, right? The library needs to be linked to an executable, which is this one, to run, right? So we always run the executable. Although, as you're writing your code and there's issues, then you could always just narrow down where the issue is. So you go back to the library and you build. If you see exit code zero, then you're good. Like there's no issues. If you would see like a lot of output, then there's something wrong with the code, right? So now I want to run my main program. And notice here, number 10, right, is displayed. I can add some more output uh, by saying uh, maybe uh, echo variable is, right? And then I can run it run in terminal and notice echo variable is 10 right so notice we use this uh os stream operators uh to stitch uh different kinds of text together right output together we have a sequence of characters commonly known as a string and then we have a function that returns a whole number but c plus plus knows how to work with each data type we don't have to like Tell it like uh, this is an integer. Handle it this way. The C out uh, object uh, has a lot of code in there to make coding easy for us. Okay, so we can also create a variable here. We can say integer num equals ten. So we create a variable of integer data type. Remember, integer is whole number. We name it num and we assign it the value 10, it is a statement, so we put a semicolon at the end, we can eliminate the 10 here and use num there, right? So now we're saying, okay, create, create a variable, assign it value 10, and use it as the argument for the echo variable function. And when I run this code, I will get the same output, right? So uh, value 10. Okay, so we can declare a variable, we can use it 
as the argument for our function, right? So very simple example, a covariable, but I've introduced concepts that we will use for the rest of the semester, right? Like you test your code. Once you test your code, then you go to main. Never fails every semester. Students come to my office and they're like, uh, my code's not working. Okay, let me see your let me see your test case. Well, I wanted it to work in main first, and then I was gonna write the test case. But how do you know the code works if you haven't tested it, right? So always test first. Once it tests, then you can use the code in the main program. Uh, let me see here. Uh, What's going on? Uh, make sure you are working from CMake. Uh, that's for Devon Winter. Completely lost. Well, be patient, right? Uh, I forewarned everyone that it's going to take a week or two or three to get ready for how we write code in this class, right? So. That's why we start easy. We start slowly. Okay. Yeah. Question. Oh no, uh, it's fine. Okay, so we introduced the integer and we we tested an integer, right? So that was uh, a lot for a lot to digest, right? But I have to introduce testing because if, if I don't then you all are going to think that it's not important but testing is important in programming and it's important when you set up networks it's important when you create databases uh, always testing is very important so that's why I have to introduce it okay so uh, 638 let's go through another example so let me Go to uh, SRC example 01 data types decimals, right? So we will introduce the double data type, right? So again, uh, the book probably shows you code like this. Okay, so this is a double uh, decimal and give it a value and you've created a variable uh, of double meaning decimal and you've assigned it the value 10.5, but uh, we take it a step further here, and instead we use that variable in a function, right? So let me see here. Write a double value return function. Okay, so return double. Okay, we're like, okay, return double. Name it at to double one. Okay, at to double one that accepts a double parameter so okay so accept double you can name it whatever right doesn't matter semicolon Professor? yes does double mean float like is that what you mean like it what's double again yeah it's float like uh like, okay yeah so float. it's has better precision right so, so decimal float whatever right? like perfect thank you so we can use decimals right Okay, so okay, so we're like, okay, so now what? So semicolon means I'll finish this code later, so I copy everything but semicolon. I go and open CPP and let me go here. And let me see. Write code for function name add to double one to add point three three times to incoming double parameter. Okay, so, so let's see what does this mean? Okay, so add 0.3 three times to incoming double parameter, right? So we can say, okay, so I need to return a double. Num is a double, so it's telling me return num, but add 0.3 three times to it. So plus 0.3 plus 0.3 plus 0.3, okay? Right, code. Okay. So double decimal float, right? And we are using decimals here, and we will send it. Uh, I think uh, I'm not sure what we'll send it. We look at the test case, and then we'll see. Okay. So let me go to the test case. So 
Now I jump to test uh, 01 data types. I open the test file, scroll down, and then I have some hints here. So test case add to double with zero as the parameter. Okay, so we're like, okay, zero as a parameter. Let's copy this piece here, paste it here. Let's not forget the closing statement, uh, closing bracket or curly brace. And now we're like, okay, so, so it's saying test case add to double one with zero as parameter. What does that mean? It means that we are expecting our function to accept a double, right? So it's saying use zero as the as the argument. So we're like, oh, okay. So let me say require uh, before I forget, I need to now help C++ find my new code. So I have to say include and I'm working with decimals.h decimals.h Okay, so now it will be able to find that function, right? So add to double one, and it's telling me to use zero. And I'm like, okay, so what value goes here on this side? Well, we look at our code. So let's go to decimals CPP. That's the implementation file. And we're like, okay, so, so if I send in zero, and I add 0.33 three times, then then zero plus point nine. Nine, it should be 0.9, right? So I'm like, okay, so so I'm expecting 0.9 here, okay? Again, echo variable and echo variable the same. We we can't have that, so we say test add to double one, right? Uh, testing inconsistencies when comparing doubles, right? So let's see what happens. So I will need to go to EX01 test and I run in terminal. Okay, so let me run that code. It's building my code. And then let's see what happens. And my doctor howling. Okay, so like to to our eye, 0.9 and 0.9 are equal, right? But it's telling us that it failed, right? So I've introduced double, which is use double whenever you want to work with floats or decimal values. But also be careful when you are comparing, right? When you want to compare doubles, you have to convert them to integers first. You can you convert them to integers and then you compare the, them as integers, right? Because the CPU for uh, my computer, uh, the arithmetic CPU that C++ uses, like maybe it has 0 0.9001 on one side and 0.91 on the other, like I don't know the values, right? But the thing to keep in, in mind is that there will always be inconsistencies when comparing doubles, so then don't compare doubles, like convert them to integers and then compare them. I will not do that here because that'll be in the, in the homework assignment, right? You have to convert a double to integer, but by then I would have shown you how to convert them to integers. So that uh, is a double. Uh, we had a library. We tested it. Now we can use it in main. Okay. So we go into main, and I have to help C plus plus out. I have to say include decimals include IO stream. Uh, using C oh, I do not have them pre-written because I want students to get into the, the flow, right? Like, oh, okay, so I need to include 
decimals.h. Why? Why do I need to include decimals.h? Tell C++ where to find at to double one function. That's why we have to do this, okay? And here we want to use C out, okay? Explicitly uh, tell C++ that we are only using C out from IOStream. We're not and standard library, right? Stuff. So IOStream has a lot of objects. The standard library has a lot of objects, but we're telling C++ I am only interested in character output, nothing else. Once I do that, then I can say C out add to double one. Zero. So I am using the function, right? Remember in Python, I hope you you wrote your own code in a separate file at some point in the class, and then you had to bring in that code into your main file, and then you would run the program, right? Uh, if you didn't, well, we you will get a lot of practice in this course, right? So. How do I run this program? I go to SRC examples, uh, 0, 01 data types, uh, 0, 02 decimals. Uh, do I run the library? No, I run the XE, right? So right click on the uh, EX0102 XE, run in terminal. And we give it some time, and right here, right, it's at 0.9. I'm not happy with how that gives me sore eyes, so then I say, okay, uh, let me add a backslash there, and maybe like uh, adding to a double, right? So it's not bad, whatever. And now I can run it again, and let's see what we see in the output, right? So adding to a double, 0.9, right? So we can also, like we did for integers, declare a double, give it the value num, give it the value zero, <clears throat> and give it num into add to double one function as a function argument, run it, and we say add into a double, right? There will also be times when you need that return value and you need to do something with it, right? So then, uh, in that case, we need to create another variable and uh, add uh, to double num. Uh, we do something, right? But actually, we're not. So I create a variable, assign it the value zero. I call the function add to double one. I assign it the value that was given to num. Add to double one returns a double, so I assign it to num one, and then I can go ahead and eliminate this here, and then say uh, num one here, right? So do something with num one, right? Maybe uh, we can say num one equals num one plus one, just to do something with it, and then we output the values, right? So run in terminal. And uh, we expand it from the first example I gave you, right, in main. So now we create a double. We assign it the value 0. <clears throat> we use num as the parameter argument. Uh, we purposely create another num1. And then I show you that you can uh, reassign the value. In Python, you could uh, do crazy stuff like... Uh, String value, well, C++ is not that friendly. String value does not qualify as a number, so C++ is going to tell me, uh, yeah, doesn't work here. So it's building. And building. And I guess it's like, uh, yeah, like uh, cannot con convert a... Uh, character array to double, right? Because, well, it's not Python, right? We have to stick to what we told it we were going to work with, and that was double, 
and you might be like, hey, wait a minute, like this is a whole number, but C++ knows how to convert a whole number to <clears throat> double or to decimal, right? And in, uh, in math, like we can add a whole number to a decimal, right? Like uh, one plus 0.5 is 1.5, right? So we can do it uh, in, re in, real in the real world and we should be able to do it in programming, right? So we go run in terminal. And notice now my program is happy and it runs. Questions here? Okay, so integer is a whole number. Double or decimals, commonly known as float. C++ has a float data type, but uh, the recommendation is to use double because it can uh, support uh, larger numbers and it has a lot better precision than a float value. Okay, so we will not use the float here in this course. Okay, so we can go ahead and close main here and here and here, and then we jump to the keyword auto. And here I will not create a function. I will just introduce the keyword auto. So I'll say include input IO stream. I'm going to display something to screen. So using stat out. And in Python, you can do this and you can uh, do this. I, whatever. And Python's like, oh, yeah, I know what data type you want to work with. And C++ uh, makes us tell it what we are working with, unless we use the keyword auto. So if we use the keyword auto, we can say number equals five, and C++ is like, oh, okay, int, or whole number, right, type. We can say uh, 5.5, 5 .5 and it's like, oh, double, right? We can say, uh, well, for now, that's what all I've introduced, so that's all. That's all I'll uh, work with here. We have to use the keyword auto. Right? It, they're trying to catch up with the Pythons of the world, but because C++ has existed since like the early 80s, like it's just not as easy to, to say, oh, okay, so why don't we just let them do this? Well, we can't do that because there's already code that exists in legacy code like this, right? Maybe somebody already wrote code that says in num, uh, equals something, and if we're saying uh, num equals five, and we're thinking that we are creating a new variable, we're not, right? Like uh, some other variable probably exists in the code already, so that's why they just can't let us do something like this. We have to use the keyword auto. So here we declare a variable num, and we have to, like Python, create give it a value. I can't say auto num right away. It's like, uh, yeah, that, that's not going to fly. So we have to give it a value, okay? And we can output the values. Num is integer. Uh, num. And then I say, uh, this is... Uh, double, which is a float or decimal, right? And then I can run this. We're not going to create a test case here, right? So I'm running terminal. And uh, we have the value 5 and 5.5. C++ knows uh, that we want to work with whole numbers here, integer data type, and double or decimals here, right? So the recommendation uh, for developers is to use auto, the keyword auto, as much as possible, right? Uh, there is legacy code that <clears throat> declares data types. Uh, the recommendation is not to go back and change that stuff for new code, right? Um, uh, remember, there's C++ code with millions of lines of code out there, so it doesn't make sense to go and 
mess around with the data types, right? But for new code, the recommendation is to use the keyword auto. Okay, and that's all I want to say about auto. And we can use it for uh, examples, and I will be using it for examples from now on, okay? Uh, and you want to speak, are you going to want to use that when we're coding? Uh, I don't enforce it. It's up to you all. The recommendation is to write, but I'm not that picky. I'm going to punish students for... As long as it works, we're good. But yeah. the the best the best practice is to use auto. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. And does that work for strings and everything? You can just use auto with the proper configuration, right? So I'll, we'll get to that. Right? So uh, strings are a different type of beast, right? So we're almost there. So I'm going to try to get through it. So let me see here. Uh, Write int uh, value return function get car ASCII with a char or character parameter. So notice here we have parameter character return value int. So they, they are different. Uh, character ch. Uh, actually, I want to do that. So do that. Copy everything but semicolon. And I'm not sure if you all are familiar with ASCII values, right? But uh, if you do a search for ASCII table on the internet, then you will see ASCIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIIII
failed because, well, this is wrong. So for now, I have to comment it out, right? Because it's in my way. So run in terminal. And it's building. And as long as we see green, we should be happy. All tests pass, right? Uh, click there, up arrow, space, dash, s, enter. It gives us detail. And notice, we send in the value uh, a. We expect 65. It returns 65. Lowercase a, we expect 97. And it gave us 97. Uh, so characters are stored as numbers in memory. right? So that's why this works. And I think uh, I'll stop here, right? So uh, let me. So we've covered data types, right? Which is the easy part. But I think the programming process or workflow is sometimes, most of the time, what's like uh, scares students, right? It intimidates students, right? But uh, we write code, we test code. And then we can use the code in main. Okay. So let me go here. Header file. We always only write the function header or signature or prototype. You'll he hear those names mentioned, right? Header, prototype, signature. And we link it with uh, the CPP. We have to include uh, card.h. And then uh, we restate our function prototype or header, and then we write the code for our function, OK? C++ is very picky. You always have to tell it what data types you are working with, right? And that's what we've done to now. Uh, not used get uh, car ASCII in main, but I can, right? So I go here, and that'll be the last piece today. So we say include car.h, include IO stream because I want to display something to screen. Include character output, and then I can say C out uh, char A is, and then I can say get, and then I can say A, and run my program, and run it. And character A is stored as 65 in memory. Obviously, not the value 65. It'll be in binary format. We will cover a little bit of that in the next class, OK? So uh, 